What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well now If you're like me, you love a good reddit story However, one major issue that i've come across over the years of reading out stories on reddit is that you'd read a post from a certain user It would end on some sort of cliffhanger and you'd never know what happened next Unless they happened to write an update and you went on their profile and somehow found it again You just wouldn't know however this subreddit r slash best of redditor updates is all about the updates. It's all about those stories where you're not quite sure what's gonna happen next. And then OP does actually provide an update and it's amazing. Without further ado, I'll show an example. This first story is brilliant. Mother-in-law gifted me laser tattoo removal for my birthday. I don't want them removed. I just found this subreddit and I had to share this story. My husband, who is 43, and I, 31, have been married for three years, together for six. Obviously, there's an age gap between my husband and I, which has never been an issue for us. My mother-in-law, however, has always greatly disapproved and likes to talk to me like I am a rebellious teenager instead of her son's life partner. A big issue for her is the fact that I have tattoos. I love all my tattoos. They are all well done and a huge part of my identity. I can't imagine myself without them and my husband loves how they look on me. My mother-in-law made a few comments while we were dating, but my husband told her privately to drop it. Three years ago, my husband and I hosted our families for my birthday dinner. It was our first big get together after getting married and everyone was nice enough to bring me a gift. I was going to open them after everyone left, but my mother-in-law handed me an envelope at the dinner table and insisted I open it immediately. Inside was a card and a gift certificate to a local tattoo removal business for $500. I was confused and I asked her what this was for. She said that since I was a married woman now and planning to have kids, she assumed I would want my tattoos removed. Both my husband and I were kind of taken aback and stunned. I half-heartedly thanked her and the party continued. Later, my husband called her and told her off. He insisted she take it back and get her money back. She absolutely refused and insisted I would want it someday. Three years later, her $500 is still sitting in my kitchen junk drawer and I've added three more tattoos to the collection. Now guys, here is where it gets good. Here is the update. Thank you so much for all the great suggestions on what to do with the gift certificates. I actually have a friend who is the director of a restorative justice organization. I asked her if she had any clients with hate symbols they would like removed, and it turns out she works with a guy who has a swastika on his arm that he hides every day because he's so ashamed. This is particularly significant and powerful for me because I'm Jewish. Anyway, I'm dropping it off today and I'm really pleased that something that started as a disrespectful slight from my mother-in-law has turned into this. Thank you, Reddit. So there we go, guys. Turning entitlement and just being horrible into something amazing. You wouldn't normally see that sort of thing. You just see the initial post and then wonder whatever happened. But the whole point of this subreddit is that you get amazing updates like this. Speaking of, what an update, by the way. I could not think of a better way to use the gift card than what you've done. Brilliant stuff. Your mother-in-law is a disgrace, but who cares? You've put her money to great use. Fair play to you. Delusional neighbor bangs on the shared wall when our baby cries and nothing can be done about it. I live in a duplex in Washington state with my husband and my son, who is only a few months old. My father-in-law owns half of the duplex and is renting it to us, and the other half is owned by an older woman and her adult daughter. My father-in-law has known the woman for over 15 years and told us before we moved in that the daughter was mentally ill and had strong delusions on occasion that caused trouble with the previous tenants. The last tenants apparently had to get a civil anti-harassment order placed against the daughter, but eventually moved out when the behaviors never stopped. Apparently, the neighbor accused them of kidnapping and abusing their children and abusing their dogs. My husband and I brought our son home a few months ago, and we didn't have any issues with the neighbor until about two weeks ago. She's begun banging on and throwing things at the walls when our son cries. She screams at us as well, but I usually can't hear what she's actually saying. You know, over the screaming baby. And the two dogs going absolutely ballistic because of the banging. It's absolute chaos, and it's made my postpartum anxiety so much worse. Every time the baby cries, I experience intense panic, waiting for the screaming and banging to start. We've called the non-emergency police line twice when I can't handle it anymore and feel close to a meltdown. And the first time, they talked to her, and she stopped doing it as often maybe once every two days 
Tonight, she is back at it and worse than ever. The air quality is so bad right now from the fires that I can't let the dogs out for long to stop them from barking. And the barking makes the baby cry harder, which makes the neighbors scream and pound on the walls harder. The officer I spoke with says we can try to get a civil anti-harassment order placed, but he knew for a fact that her behaviors never stopped after the last tenants tried that. And he said his unofficial advice would be to live somewhere else. Is that seriously my only option? We can't afford to move, but I can't keep living like this. Now, here we go. The all important update, which is honestly unbelievable. My first post never got much attention, but the outcome was pretty wild. Short version. In October 2020, my husband and I were renting in a duplex where my father-in-law owned the half we lived in and a separate family, adult daughter acting as caregiver to elderly mother, owned the other half. We brought our son home from the NICU in August and towards the end of September, the neighbor, who was in her 40s, started to pound on the shared wall if she could hear him cry. The pounding escalated over the next two months. The neighbor bought a megaphone to yell through the wall and threatened to rip us apart. She called us child predators and she'd yell obscenities and threats until three or four in the morning. The police were called multiple times. Nothing could be done about it. One officer told us, I'm going to kill you. See, it doesn't mean anything if I don't actually do it. The elderly mother hadn't been seen in several months, but requests for wellness checks were brushed off. The general advice I got was that as renters, we couldn't do anything. It was also suggested that this was reasonable behavior since the crying baby was probably really annoying. What, threatening someone's life because their baby's crying? Yeah, seems reasonable. Since my first post, we moved in with my grandmother for our safety. The neighbor ended up busting a soft ball sized hole through the shared wall to scream at us and occasionally just stare at us. The smell that came out of the hole was indescribably bad. Our security cameras recorded her coming to my son's nursery window at around 2 a.m. almost daily, just staring and holding her cats. It took until the end of January for the police to be able to enter her property. The elderly mother had been deceased since at least June and the daughter had the corpse dressed in her Sunday best rotting in a dead bolted bedroom the news article said the mother died from natural causes the daughter was taken to an inpatient psychiatric facility yeah with this one i can't help but think that maybe i didn't want the update wow uh what the heck do you get my general point though the first post got like literally 40 upvotes and had no attention whatsoever without this update the story would never even been a thing i can't quite believe what i've just read that being said but wow what a post i'm sorry but that's complete police ineptitude like you're not even doing your job if someone is banging on the walls threatening your life go and sort it out like what are you doing the policeman that said to you i'm gonna kill you oh wait no i'm not so there you go you see words actually don't mean anything what is what what so verbal abuse is not a thing anymore oh, unbelievable let's move on now our final post of today's episode is an uplifting one because that last one was pretty terrifying i'm not gonna lie it comes from r slash tip of my tongue here it is my college professor said if someone in the class can find this clip he will waive the final exam okay guys my college professor says if we were able to find this video he would waive the final test i've spent hours searching youtube daily motion google etc trying to find it but now I'm counting on you to help me out and lead me in the right direction. Anyways, it's a communication class, and I guess it relates to our subject we're currently talking about. But he had the video saved on an old computer, but the computer got water damage or something, and he lost everything, including the video. So he said if we could somehow, some way, find the video, he will waive the final for the whole class. Anyways, the way he described the video as best he could was as... He says he last remembers watching it in 2014, but it could be possibly 10 years old or more. He says it was a cartoon, but for some reason I don't believe him. He wants to say that it was by Comedy Central and the video is roughly 10 minutes long. This is all secondhand info and it was from roughly five years ago, so take everything with a grain of salt. Video description. He says that there were a couple of people talking about dating and one of them started talking about what if we all had to go to the DMV or something and get judged on our appearance from one to 10 and then was given a card with that number and then we could date anyone we wanted with a lower number but couldn't date a higher number unless the higher number wanted to date. He then went on to tell us a scenario. I'm not sure if this is an example to help us understand or if it was from the video, 
but this lady was having a lazy day. No makeup, hair up in a bun, sweats, etc. And she was at the grocery store. And this man approached her and said he wanted to date. And she whipped out her dating appearance card and said, I'm an eight and you're a three. You can't date me. I only look like this since I just got out of the shower. And that is all I can remember him telling us about the video. Again, the last time he remembers watching this video was five years ago. So any and all info could be mixed up or very different from how he described. But he promised if we could find the video, he'd waive the final exam for the whole class. So please, if you remember this video and give me more info or possibly a link, that would be great. Now, here is one of the comments that was left below the post. It's a clip from Shorties Watching Shorties. A great clip I think of all the time. In the show, these babies talk between clips and the clips they watch are animated bits from people's stand-up. I will try to find the specific clip your teacher is talking about. Ah, but an edit. Bad news. I'm not finding this specific clip on YouTube. It's not on Netflix or Hulu. You can, however, stare at the episode thumbnails on Amazon Prime, but the episodes are not available on Prime. You can buy it on DVD on Amazon for well over $100. You can always try The Pirate Life. I'll ask my roommate about it when he gets home. The studio that animated the show might just be the same studio that animated the Ricky Gervais show. Now here is another relevant comment. Is Shorties watching Shorties? Comedy Central has it on their site. And now here is a comment from OP. Thanks to all and all who contributed. The video is in fact by Comedy Central. It's Shorties Watching Shorties, Episode 9, Gosling Burr Perkins Yard. And the specific clip he is talking about is about minute 9 to 10. I'll try and record a video during class and update you all tomorrow afternoon. So here we go. Here's the best bit. The moment you've all been waiting for, what happens next? Solved. Update. So, I wasn't able to get a video of the class's reaction, but here is a summary of what went down in class today for anyone who cares. So at the beginning of class, the professor started off by asking if anyone had any hope of finding the video. I waited a bit, and several other students raised their hands, saying they spent hours looking for the video, but came up completely empty-handed. One student said she emailed Comedy Central, asking for any help, but they hadn't responded. I raised my hand and said I in fact found the video with a little help. The professor laughed and said there's no way and went on to say that he's given every one of his classes in the past four years the same chance to find the video and waive the final exam, yet no one has been able to find it. The whole class turned and looked at me. Some stunned, some started asking if I was kidding, and some cheering. So I pulled up the video and the professor came over to me to verify. He watched about two seconds of it and was like, yep, that's the one. Email me that right now. People started thanking me and asking what my favorite cookies or drink were. Some students asked how the heck I possibly found it. I got a few high fives. The professor pulled up Canvas, which is a whole course online. That's grades, assignments, discussions, PowerPoint, etc. With it being projected for us all to see and made a note to cancel the final exam. He said if we want, or if campus requires us to have a score for the final, he will have a class group final and he will help us. He then asked how I found it. And I went on to explain how I also spent hours searching without finding it. I even downloaded Tor or something like that to search on the deep web. I've got no experience with the deep web, so I had no idea if it would help me at all or give me more options for videos. So don't execute me over this for thinking it might work. After I got discouraged searching the deep web, I asked my roommate who was a bit more tech savvy than I, hoping he might have a suggestion. He looked at me like I was stupid and said, dude, just get on Reddit. If it's an actual video and not a dream or something made up, someone on Reddit will find it. And well, I made this post and within an hour, I was close to finding the video and within two hours i had an actual link the professor just shook his head and said i didn't even think of reddit i'm fuming it was that easy he went on to show the clip of the video since it was perfect for today's subject i continued class as normal with powerpoints a couple of times throughout the lecture he caught himself saying this will be on the exam then caught himself oh wait there is no exam and he'd point at me followed by a few more cheers. So my classmates and I thank you all. And for everyone's help with all of your suggestions, upvotes, 
and time and there we go guys that is our slash best of updates really hope you enjoyed it i certainly did as you can tell a very wide range of stories there we had some like the last one which were just brilliant and, and showed reddit to be such an amazing place where you can literally find answers in seconds most of the time and then others which were downright terrifying uh yeah a wide range which i thoroughly enjoyed if you did and you want to see more of this subreddit do let me know like drop a like on this video because i need to know right if you enjoy it or not drop a comment down below as well if you really enjoyed it and that will let let me know for sure that you want to see more on the subreddit. To be fair, I really do hope you liked it because I really did and I want to do it more. So yeah, let me know and I'll see you tomorrow.